Right, part two. So welcome back. Um, yesterday, we got the pistons built up and got the crank in. You haven't seen that yet because the camera was being an ass and kept cutting off after a few seconds. So it never got recorded properly, sadly. So I'm going to repeat myself and just go through that for you now. But you'll also see it in a minute. So yeah, you get two stages of this. Um, yeah, let's have a quick look down here. You have a look. Wait, there it is. All rotating freely. The only thing that's holding the resistance is the lube. No notchness. All beautifully done. So, cap sim. One, two, three, four, five. You have to remember with the French cars, number one is the flywheel end. It's the same with the Peugeots and the Citroëns. Um, you put the caps down first, give them a tap. Drop your bolts in, make sure the bolts are nice clean, no oil or anything on them. And then nip them down gently. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, zigzag back. Just basically so you don't forget and evenly does it. We do 20 newton meters first, all the way through them all. I cracked them off again and then redid them again 20 just to make sure everything's compressed nicely. Then it's 62 degrees. You will need a degree gauge for this. And I think it's plus six after that or something like that. I'll put it on the screen in a minute. And that's it then. Your crank is in. The end one has a bead of silicon down each side to seal it. And then your crank seal will go on the end on that side. And the crank seal on this one is a whole piece with the timing gear for the oil thing. Pump. <laughs> so yeah, you'll see all that in this one. We will be putting the common rods in, so you'll need a piston ring compressor. My rings are already on the pistons because it's been dropped out and they're going back in. If you're doing this from new, you will need to check the gaps on the piston rings, of course. You need to check all your gaps for the bearings so you know what size you're ordering. I haven't covered any of that, of course. But it's a machine shop job, or unless you know what you're doing. I've done it myself, I know what I'm doing a little bit. You have to remember this. This is me building an engine in my living room. I'm not 100% a professional. So don't take everything I say for... What's the word? Yeah. Just... It's a little guide. Just so you can see what you're doing. I seem to get things right and they don't blow up. Hopefully. So. Bearings. Conrods and lube. Let's get on with it then. Exciting bits going together, innit? All right, new bearings, conrod, make sure it's spotless again, and all they do, click in, that's it, simple as that, put the same in the cap, do all four and these are ready to go in, just keep them clean. Make sure it's spotless, I mean go and check this again in a minute because even just moving around, bits of crap everywhere. One cleaned out crank, one caps, luckily on the Renault engine they're numbered, 54321. The end cap here has to be siliconed when you pull it in, with gasket sealer, high quality stuff, make sure. We're going to put the bearings in, they just push into place, but see you've got the groove in the hole. Your bearings match, there's grooved and smoothed bearings. Screwed with a hole in the bottom, smoothed on the top of the cap. Bottom half of the bearings are in. As you can see, all cleaned or spotless. Uh, what I should have mentioned before is that you need to check what side bearing you need. You can either have a machine shop do this, or you need a micrometer and a bore gauge. And it's a case of working out the gap difference in what bearings you need. Um, you can also use plaster gauge. But for that, you're also going to need the bearings, so it's more of an after piece of final check. So they're in. I'm going to put my thrust washers in now. These sit in the centre here. On number... Which way around is this now? That's number three, if I remember. So what I'm going to do is put a bit of engine lube on the back. Because these just sit in and they're held in place by the cap. And the engine lube will stick it to the side. 
and stop it falling out. Can't trust the camera, sadly, to record all this. But all we're going to do is lube everything up. Okay, and all it takes is a good smear. So you're going to put them on there, all the way along. You're going to put it on your caps as you put them in. You want to keep this surface clear as we put the caps on. So when you're clamping it down, there's nothing holding it up. So make sure they're spotless before you put your caps on. We will have to put silicone on the end cap. And we're nip it all down in a zigzag as we go across to, I think it was 20 newton meters, but I'll pull it up on the screen. And then the final degrees. But I'll probably do 20 all the way along, back off a little bit, and then do it again. See, brush washers are in there, both sides. Put your lube on, give it a hard pinch, and the suction will hold them on. That's all it takes. So let's go. Four caps in. Just lube, tap down, and finger tight. We've got to put the end one in. You've got a groove each side. We're going to run some silicone down that, and then put that in. Again, make sure it's all clean on the bottom. Don't want anything there. And whatever you do, I've dropped the crank in, which I realised didn't get recorded. Drop it straight down. Do not rotate it. Do not do anything with it. Just drop it in there, rest. You don't want to be spinning bearings or anything like that. Again. <laughs> So, hopefully I record this bit, let's go on. Right, they want to back off the pistons again because I got the bearings out and they have tangs on, which is a little bit, if the camera will focus on it, there, it's, Basically a little bend out, it stops the bearing from spinning. But the rods didn't have it. So I've just been to the machine shop and had them cut out. So I need to clean them all up again, check on my balancing again, and then they can go in. So it's gone with that. Pistons are going in. Soaking them beforehand in some oil to fill all the galleries up and the rings with oil ready. I clean the bore inside make sure there's nothing in there give it a smear of oil then drop it down use your ring compressor really gently tap it in i've just broke my ring compressor so i'm not going to show you how i'm actually putting these in so yeah i don't want your shower on me for that then we spin the engine over and do the apr bolt which i'll show you next so let me get this one in and we'll be back pistons in I pull up to the crank and we get our cap, make sure all the surface is clean, bearings in ready, little dot of lube, and give it a smear up the bearing, lovely stuff, there we are. all clean again, drop my cap on. Give it a little pinch. There you are. Next. APR bolts. These are a 3 8. So when you get your socket out, not an 11, not a 10, 3 8. We get, one minute. You'll get instructions in the back, they're behind the lube. Make sure you use this. Tons in this, you won't need it all. It's like graphite stuff. No, we do. Little blob. I can't stick that out of the way. There. And what we want is just to fill all the threads. We don't want lumps of the stuff on it. Just a nice smear. Make sure they're all full. Beautiful. Then I put a little bit under the head. Or you can easy pull on the top layer. And pull it in. Going as far as you can. 
Get the next one. Get my lube. I use this stuff on a lot of bolts, to be fair. It's good stuff. Because you have some left over. So again, fit all the threads. You're meant to have a stretch gauge for fitting these. That's what they recommend. They cost a bomb. And unless you're a high revving engine, like 15k motorbike stuff, you get away without. Your instructions tell you this, but they also give you 42 foot-pounds on these ones. They won't give you that number if it wasn't fine to do it. But what it doesn't tell you on there is to stretch them. If you have a look on their website, it's a very good website, it will tell you. Tighten them up, undo them. Tighten them up, undo them. I'm sure it says like seven times. I've done these about five. So what I do, get the torque wrench, wherever I pull it. Lost my torque wrench. Yeah, torque wrench up there. Three apes, 42 foot pounds. Make sure you get a good one. It can go that low. Get them in. But go even side to side to nip it up first. This is miles away. The first time you go in, you'll feel it feel a bit tight. Don't worry, it won't do anything. And that's nipped to get the other one down a bit. I haven't clicked it yet, you'll have to see. Just going side to side to even the go down with the head. Because I've got dowels in this, so we'll go down a little bit tight with that one. Yeah, and this time I'm going to click it. Click. And then all we do, take it and do. Turn it back. And do it again. Click. Click. And back it off again. Do this. Like I said, it says... I'm sure it says seven times on there, but five's enough. All this is doing is making sure the bolts are the correct length. But it's also, if there's any oil, any lube, compacting it, squeezing it out. Because you'll realise the first time you do it, these are tight. Second time, it's much easier. And then you know it's at the correct torque. Um, I need to do this one. But, not if I do that one. It all rotates freely. So, I spin this one down. I've done that five now, I think. So, go down here. And what I've done, every time I've done one, I've made sure everything rotates freely. Well, on this one, because I'm recording, I've done two at a time for some reason. So what I do in a minute, I crack those off and do them again. But now, look at that. No resistance. Beautiful. Ooh, can't get my hand in there. Don't want to lose your fingers. Everything in here is sharp as hell. Everything, all the casting marks, everything. Proper sharp. I've already cut my hands a couple of times. So that's it. So I'm going to crack that off again. Do it a couple more times. And that's it. Then we can start putting all the rest of it together. Right. Oil pump time. One sprocket. Fat side. Out. Simply slides on. Rotates freely. The friction when you clamp your crank bolt in holds that in place. One chain. Back on, just simply fold out of the way for a minute. It's in there. Oil pump, and if I spin the right way, baffle. I'm guessing it's a baffle of some sort. It is a baffle in it. One oil pump. In the rebuild video, I didn't show you putting it back together, and I should have done really. I'm sure you can hear that. 
I primed it with assembly lube, so that's ready to go. There is torque settings for these two bolts, which are on screen now. Also, there's torque settings for putting it back together, which are on screen now. This and this minute, has tabs, as you can see here, which locate over the pump. I mean, I can't look at the camera and do that. There you are. And it holds it all together in one piece. So what we do, get your chain, and ooh, making a mess of this, aren't I? Hook the chain back in the gear. There you are. Locate it in place. That's it. That goes where it goes. That's it. Now I can spin them down by hand. One bolt for that. I'll just do that tight because I don't have a torque setting for that one actually. I haven't found one anyway. To be honest, you probably could do it the same as these because it's the same block, but you're into plastic. Is there a. It didn't look properly. Uh, yeah, say the same because there's a steel collar. But I'm just going to do it tight. Next is your cover plate. I've got to pop out the old seal if I can. Ooh, that was quite easy. Old seal, I've got a new one. I'll clean this up with a bit of 1200. You've got a guide for the chain there, so make sure that's not worn too badly. Gasket on it. I'm going to run a little bit of silicon on this. You should get a new gasket, really. It's been a cheapskate. And then, it's simple as, get down here, tuck it under your chain. Line it up with a little dowel. And that's it. I need to get the bolts for it and bolt it on. I think they're 13 newton meters, but I can't be sure with that. So I'm just gonna nip them all up tight because it, it's only a casing. You just don't want to be stripping the threads. And then press the seal in there. You need to get your new seal. Voila. I'll put a little bit of oil on it. Slide it over. You need to find sockets the best thing. Fit over that and tap it in evenly, nice and straight, until it's flush. Then, for you, your crank will just slip on. That's it for you, because you don't have anything. I have, some people put McGowan ones. If you have a look in there, there is a keyway for a Woodruff key. I have one made. So that goes in. Locks in to the end of the cam, uh, the cam, the crank, which you can see there. Stops that rotating. The height, oops, and everything, I'm running the power and all wise. It's best to have this. The last thing you want is that spinning over. And all your time you're going to pot and smashing valves, smashing pistons. Bit of a nightmare. Right, so I'm going to pop this back off. Run a bit of sealant around it. Pop my cam sealing, my crank sealing. Then it's a case of putting a sump on. Run silicon all the way around. Tighten them all up. If I've got a torque setting, I'll pull on the screen now. Um, I'm actually going to buy some nice new bolts for this, which I can't get today. I want some nice stainless Allen keys because I hate the horrible stars. And they are. That is your boss man. Oh, sorry. Crank seal in the other side. You need to do that. I can't do that at the minute because I'm on the stand. As you can see. But that's it. I've just got to drop the sump on it. Take that back off. Seal it all up as I've said. Put my crank seal in. Again, tap it all the way around. Make sure you get it even. High quality sealant to put your sump back on with. And then it's just a case of putting sensors back in everything else but that is basically your bottom end so voila there we have it one false block we'll just keep minus the sump until i get some bolts let's get that head pull and polish them see you next time